Hello! Welcome back. Today I am very excited because today is the day that we talk about the anarchist feminist of my heart, Emma Goldman. Particularly through this book entitled Emma Goldman, Revolution as a Way of Life by Vivian Gornick as part of the Jewish Live series. The first time I was exposed to Emma Goldman was in second year when I did an intro to political theory class when I studied this book, which is Anarchism and Other Essays by Emma Goldman. Even though I've alluded to my penchant for the feminist anarchism, the anarcho-feminism before on my channel, I haven't really actually talked about what it is that I like about it, what parts I am drawn to, what I identify with, and like really getting into the theory and stuff. So I can do that if you would like. I'd be happy to do that. Let me know. Even though the subtitle of the book is Revolution as a Way of Life, it took me a minute to clue in that this was the lens that the author was using in order to assess and discuss Emma's life in terms of what revolution meant to her, what her radicalism was, and how that affected all the various parts of her life. One thing that I think the author did really well in this biography, which I truly appreciated, was how well she built up Emma's ideology in terms of unpacking the influences, in terms of people that she was reading, people she was associated with, as well as fleshing out her own life experiences and how that affected the way that she viewed and understood the world. Like I said, I will be happy at a later date to go like more in depth into like the specific Goldman's anarchism and anarchism slightly more generally, um, but I will give you a little taste of how Gornick classifies uh, Emma's radicalism. On the very first page, Gornick says that the hatred she bore the centralized state was rooted in what she took to be government's brutish contempt for the feeling life of the individual. She goes on to say that comrades were those who, in the name of the revolution, were bent on honoring the complete human being. And that is because, as she follows up with on page four, radical politics for her, e.g., was in fact the history of one's own hurt, thwarted humiliating feelings at the hands of institutionalized authority. So for Goldman, what oppressive structures like the state were doing was basically removing people from being able to be themselves, to experience their own humanity, and were being prevented from cultivating their own individual selves. One example to illustrate the way in which she wanted to be free of the state and conventions in society is through free love. So her version of free love that she argued for and lived out is different from the way that we think about free love that comes out of the sexual revolution in the 1960s. For Emma Goldman, what free love meant was to just give love freely outside of the confines of the state, right? So she didn't believe in marriage, she didn't believe in the same conventions at the time in terms of like courtship, dating. Although Gornick didn't really get into the specific gendered aspects of her radicalism, there was something that she pointed to, which is the fact that Goldman was actually quite unique. A lot of the stuff that she focused on included marriage, free love, birth control, and these were things that a lot of anarchists and other fellow radicals criticized her for because they felt that they were trivial in lots of different ways. However, those are very distinctly gendered issue, as you can see. And a lot of anarchists were just like, we're, like, we're not talking about birth control. And then she was like, fuck you, I'm gonna talk about it. Watch me live my life. Not only does she get Goldman's timeline down pat, which you would hope from a biography about a person in terms of her immigration to America, how she rose to prominence in America, how she was doing her whole lecture circuit around the world, and then her deportation from America because J. Edgar Hoover was not a fan, uh, called her the most dangerous woman in America. So there's that. And then she ended up being shipped, off, shipped back to Russia right after Lenin had taken over, which did not go over well for her. 
she fucking loathed it uh, because she went there and was like, what the fuck? This wasn't revolution. This is a new dictatorship. Fuck the Marxist. I was right about this the whole time. And then she eventually was able to come back from Russia. She was like, I'm leaving. Bye. And then she was around, I think it was the UK, where she basically went off all the time about how much she despised what was happening in Russia. However, she got ostracized for this because this was at a time when her prominence and popularity was dwindling. And it was also at a time when, like, not very few people knew what was happening in Russia at the time, right? All of her radical leftist friends were like, this is a success! Um, but she was like, fam, no, it's not. Uh, but she was heavily ostracized for that, for having that unpopular opinion. And then, you know, when she ended up having to go to Canada, she didn't love it here at all because there wasn't a lot of radical spirit, you know, um, and then she died in Toronto. Um, so her timeline, and then also the timeline and legacy of Goldman, but also anarchism more generally, because she talks about it in its context of its, you know, prominence and heyday, specifically in America, obviously, and then goes on to discuss the nostalgia that it was viewed with, in the Depression era, and then how that was kind of drawn on in the 1960s postmodernism stuff going on there. So that was good because I haven't really been able to see that kind of a trajectory, you could say, with the ideology. So thank you for that, Gornick. This book is quite slim, and I think it does produce a very compact narrative of what she decided to talk about in Goldman's life. However, because she did create enough space to talk about ideology, I do wish that she had problematized Goldman's ideology a little bit more. Because as I said, critical fan of Goldman. Because she's not perfect. Because there's so much discussion about, you know, her context, but not about how that context was also embedded in oppression that Goldman uh, perpetrated. For instance, Goldman was decidedly ambivalent about racial issues in terms of things like civil rights. Very not a fan uh, because she felt that it was reformist politics, right? And she was about getting out of the state, not reforming the state. That's why she wasn't a fan of suffrage, actually. But at the same time, birth control, that was like a thing for her, um, was trying to gain access to birth control for women within a state paradigm, and that's actually one of the reasons she went to jail, was for handing out literature and pamphlets on birth control. So, hmm. I'm not like that mad about it because there is so much other material that does discuss that, um, but just know that, you know, it's not a, com it's obviously not a complete history, but just, you know, know that there were issues and problems, even if they're not found in that one volume. To end, this probably super long video because I can't help myself, okay? I'm getting slated. Um, is to end with my favorite moment of this book. This is when Goldman was in prison and Nellie Bly, okay, Nellie Bly, who was one of the most prestigious reporters for New York's paper Worlds, she was a young woman who Oh my god, she did so much investigative journalism. She fucking forged so many pathways. Okay, Nellie Bly interviewed Emma Goldman in prison where, and I quote, for two hours Bly let Goldman talk about capitalism and anarchism, personal freedom and sexual love, buying books instead of clothes, until at last she pronounced Goldman a modern Joan of Arc. Oh my god. Thinking about these two fucking extraordinary radical young women just sitting there talking about, you know, anarchism, books. This, I read this, I was deceased, and then I was brought back to life because this passage gives me life. Like, just thinking about the power of, like, Essentially, teenage girls is so important to me, okay? Literal, just girly things, you know? Like, they're just talking about the fall of the state, 
just casually just having it out. They were 